Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The objective of this presentation is to demonstrate one method of changing straight handpiece spurs into long shaft latch spurs. The reasons for utilizing long shaft latch spurs in endodontic procedures are threefold. First, it is to gain access to deep chamber areas. Second, observation of the shaft that is projecting out of the occlusal surface of the tooth allows one to better visualize the angle of the burr. Finally, hopefully to prevent perforation of the crown or root. The materials for this presentation needed are an electrotorque with a straight hand piece, a high speed with the number 56 burr or an additional electrotorque with a straight hand piece, carborundum disc, a heatless stone, the latch burrs that you're going to use as a model, the straight hand piece burrs, a Bowley gauge for measuring the accuracy and cutting of this, the latch head itself for testing the fit, pliers for holding the burrs at different times, safety glasses should definitely be worn for this procedure, and as an optional thing you can use a Sharpie pen to mark the location if you feel secure doing that. Before the procedure is started, one should put on their safety glasses. The straight hand piece burr as you see here, and the commercial available latch head burr is here, you notice the discrepancy in the length. What we are going to do is to machine the straight hand piece burr down to the length like so, like this one is. This allows us to have a latch head burr which is longer than the commercially available latch burrs. The first step in doing this is to cut down the length of the burr that you want. In this case, I'm going to cut off approximately four to five millimeters. Initially, I'm going to show cutting it off with the straight hand piece of the other electrotorque. However, if you only have the one electrotorque, you could just hold the burr in the pliers and just hold it and cut it. Or if you have the two of them, you can do it like this. As you notice, I am cutting with a carborundum disc. You could also cut with a green stone or the 56 burr if you're using the high speed. Once you've cut off the end, the next step is to smooth the very end of the burr. So now we have cut off the amount of length that we want to cut and the next step is to measure the diameter of the commercially available latch head burr at the constricted area. To do this we take the Bowley gauge and place the Bowley gauge in the constricted area of the commercially available latch burr. After doing this, you lock it in place and then check to be sure it is the correct diameter like so. Then pick up the burr that you already cut off that's still in the handpiece and your other electrotorque or high speed in the other hand, and both of them will be rotating. So first I'll start this one. And then we'll bring the carborundum disc up and cut the groove. After you have cut it for a little while, 
you should go back and take your Boley gauge, which has been locked, and check to see how the progress is going. As you notice, we can't pull the Boley gauge through, so the constricted diameter that we are on now is too big. So I want to go back and cut some more off. As you notice, again, both electrotorques are rotating. Now this time it goes through, but it's a little tight. So what I will do now is just take a little bit more off, and then we'll go to our next step. Okay. If you will notice on the commercial latch head burr, the flat spot that has been ground into it right there, this is what we have to duplicate into our one that we've just ground the groove into. To do this, the best thing to use would be a heatless stone. And all we have to do is hold it at an angle like that with it rotating in the handpiece and we'll grind our flat spot into it, which I will do now. Now, while this procedure is going on, if you don't have two electrotorques, you can take your burr that you are cutting and put it into the pliers like so, just to hold it, or you can leave it in the electrotorque as we did before. So right now, I will cut in the groove. Try to get a better camera angle here. Now the approximate depth, which we will go to before we check it, is when it, the flat spot that we are grinding approximates the depth of the cut that was originally made. At this point, one should check the flat spot that we've ground with a commercial burr. You will notice that the commercial burr is a little more parallel to the long axis than the one that we've been cutting, so we've got a slight ledge here. You will notice that if I try it into the latch head, that it will go in, and you can see that it's rotating, but it doesn't go all the way in because I can't lock it. This is because that round ledge is there. To remove that ledge, Place it back in your pliers and go back to your carborundum disc and grind it to more 90 degrees than it is now. And then you can also smooth it up a little bit on the whole surface with the carborundum disc. You can also cut this whole ledge with the carborundum disc, but it cuts a bit slower than the heatless stone, and it wears out the carborundum disc quite fast. At this point, we will then check it in the handpiece. The latch is then latched in place, the burr is firmly in, and you check it for rotation. Like so. You can see the burr is rotating and it's not binding up, and it's also firmly in place. In summary, the objective of this presentation has been to illustrate one method of changing straight handpiece burrs into long shaft latch burrs. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.